So our next speaker I've had the pleasure of getting to know over the last two or three years that I've been here. This is uh, one of our true Aggie legends. So please join me in welcoming Coach Mark Johnson, Hall of Fame baseball coach. Thank you. Howdy. Howdy. It's the good to be in your company, and I'm very honored to be here, part of the Huffines uh, uh, discussion. And certainly an honor to be in, with the, this, especially really, really group, a good group of speakers. I had an opportunity to talk to them last night, today, and it's really been a, a benefit for me, and, and I've, I've been excited about it. My mother, when I was 10 years old, uh, we had a discussion about food, and I told her that uh, my uh, Gammy Johnson, and that's what we call my grandmother Johnson, my dad's mother, uh, she really had fancy food. And my mother paused and she said, well, did you think the food was good? And then I paused. And then she says, well, let me tell you what she did. And by her own admissions, she was not a good cook. Not a good cook. But what she did, she laced up the tablecloth. She put the best china on it and she put the best silver out on the table. She dressed it up and made it really what I thought was a pretty fancy uh, uh, piece of food. This past weekend, we went down to Kingwood, my wife and I, and visited my son uh, and his wife, and they're building a new house, and they're almost through with it, so they wanted us to see the inside, and we went inside, we looked all around it. Uh, it was really, really beautiful, so as we walked out and walked across the panel, uh, the plank, because it was wet out there, and they hadn't put the landscape down, I reminded, I said, Brian, uh, be sure, be sure you pay a lot of attention. I know you're excited to get in this house, pay a lot of attention to your your landscape because it's going to be fun, uh, be important. What I want to say, these last two, these two incidents I talked to you about, it's centered around the front porch of what the main object is. The main object is to live in the house and have warmth and comfort and be able to eat. Uh, the main object of my grandmother's food was is it's a good food for us to eat, but the projection of it was going to be critical. So we've all had lessons. You have, I have. Um, uh, these lessons that don't grade a, a book by its cover. But instinctively, we all do. We all initially are going to be influenced by a special moment early on in our investigation of what we're looking at. So I would caution on that, and, and certainly it brings me to this topic uh, that I've been asked to talk about today uh, concerning athletics as the, as the front door, really, of, our, uh, of our, our university and what it is. But suffice it to say that our awareness of initial comments, initial visions of activities are going to influence us, and so we need to be aware of it. I could tell you, and I haven't got time to do it, but I could tell you without question a number of recruiting stories that you, you'd be shocked at the reason why people picked a certain school. Uh, it was almost humorous, and I would imagine 40% over my career of kids that picked a university, whether it was our university or the other university, they picked it because of some a front porch or even the side door. They didn't get the content. They may have gotten some of the content of the university or what we're going to do out on the baseball field and all those things there. But typically, the front door was pretty important. And even the side door was pretty important to some of their decisions. It would be interesting uh, as we look at all of the Aggies that are walking our campus now, the Longhorns walking their campus, and the Owls, and the Bearcats, and the Horn Frogs, and the Red Raiders, and all those, all those young people that are walking those campuses, it would be interesting to find out how many of them initially said, I'm going to this school because of a game day experience when they were 14 or 15 years old. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, I've heard that story too many times. And then I see the old Ags coming back, and they are bringing their 13, 14, 15-year-old son, son to the game. And I see you bring the ball game. Yeah, we want him to come, come to school here. I said, what's the correlation? And obviously the correlation is there, uh, but it's an interesting comment that we, we would make. But whether you agree with it or not, right or wrong, there, you know, right or wrong would be the, the, the thing I want to say to you. Right or wrong, athletics is a, a front porch to a university. I, I don't think you could quarrel with that, and some statistics I would share with you certainly would, would uh, back that up. Athletics, for you people that have been in athletics, it's a very expensive and burdensome financial investment. There's no question. I mean, you know, for 
and uh, Elon, I'll share this with you. Uh, but what I want to say first is that as you look at it, everyone thinks that, you know, because University of Texas, the lost odds at the end of last year said they, their revenue was $163.3 million in this past year. But see, that's the highest out there. And very few universities make money in their athletic department. You need to know that the vast majority of them do not. And so you say, well, why in the world would we have these experiences? And certainly there's a mission for the individual players that are, are, are getting to play it. There, that, there's no question. But more and more, you see it as a marketing. You see it as a branding spot. And they're going to put, rather than put their money in advertisement on TV, they're going to put it out on the athletic field. And certainly you see Nike, you see Adidas, and you see all of these. That's where they're putting it. They're putting it, hoping for the picture in the Sports Illustrated of the shoe that's got a Nike brand on it. So the athletic department is going to be critical in that. And really to make money, for you to make money at it, um, it's going to be an advertisement in more cases than not. And it's going to be harder to grade out. Just recently, and, and I had a chance to talk to an athletic director, and they just started football at their university, and it's here in our state. I, I think there's three of them that just started. Um, Lamar University just started. Houston Baptist just started football. University of Texas San Antonio just started football. Texas State, I think, seven or eight years ago started there. And you said, why in the world would they take on this, this financial responsibility when there's a lot of places the university needs to have to spend the money. Now, obviously, some of it has to do with conference preference because they needed to have football to be in the conference. But more than anything else, more than anything else, it's to, it's to spark the interest of the students, spark the interest of the alumni, spark the interest of an identity within the university to give them that identity. Now, we could quarrel about that, but that seems to be, when I talked to one of the athletic directors in these four schools, that was the comment. That was the reason. For, for doing it. Even though the financial burdens were going to be great, they felt like that was going to be a strong thing to do. Dr. Doug Chung, a Harvard Business uh, School assistant, profe uh, assistant professor of marketing, um, wrote a, he wrote a, uh, an article, The Dynamic Advertising Effect of Collegiate Athletics, and he talked about the Flutie effect. And, and I, um, I may age myself, surely, surely, most of you know the Flutie effect. Doug Flutie, about 20 years ago, became the Heisman Trophy winner. He was at Boston College. He brought his team to the 48-yard line from the end zone with one play remaining, and they're playing the University of Miami in a critical ball game, and they had this last play, and he threw what we call now a Hail Mary. He told all the receivers and everybody, okay, go to this spot down there in the end zone, and I'm going to toss it up there, and we'll see where it lands. But all the defenders knew it, too, so they went to that spot, too. And so there was a battle for the ball, and of course, Boston College wins that ball game. And, and it's a, a tremendous, tremendous win. And here is what Dr. Chung says. Boston's college's greatest marketing campaign lasted six seconds. He also said in two years, the application shot 30%. Georgetown, in the middle 83s through 86, in their run for the national championship in the final four in basketball, their applications for emissions increased 45%. Northwestern won the Big 12, or the, excuse me, the Big 10 championship. The next year, their applications for emissions went up 21%. And do I need to talk about RG3 and Baylor University and their experience with the Heisman Trophy winner and the amount of financial rewards and, and certainly of the publicity they got and the branding of the Baylor University uh, program was tremendous. But we have an example right here, just down the block, in Johnny Manziel. And we look at his experiences and what he's done for this university. Uh, and uh, certainly, it's a little bit hard. I've heard the CEOs talk, and they're a little reluctant to give total credit to one thing. But in Johnny Manziel's first year here, and Kevin Sumlin's first year here, and in a tremendous, tremendously exciting football season into the Southeast Conference, all of those things in this perfect storm coming together. And we, we said, well, what do we have here? Well, the contributions were released, the contributions from last year from everyone, and not just to the 12th man or the Letterman's Club or something like that. This was all over the university to business and, and all of the university, all the departments within the university. $740 million were raised last year. And you say, my gosh, that's a lot of money. Well, how does that relate to what they've made? It's 70% more than the highest they've ever made in one year. 
You say, well, what could that ha- how could that happen? There are some other reasons, and so don't misinterpret what I'm saying. It's not just because of athletics. It's not just because of football, uh, but you would be hard-pressed not to quarrel that it had a lot to do with football, that it had a lot to do with the excess and the excitement, and everyone wants to invest in something that's going well. And so, I, it, you know, I think it might have had a difference. I think it made a difference. Uh, I had a chance in 1989 to speak at the commencement at a and Consolidated High School. The football team had gone to the final ball game on December 23rd and lost out in the championship game, but, man, it was an exciting run. Six extra weekends. Do you know that in Texas, man? If you're going to make the playoffs, you're going to keep playing a long time. And then the baseball team went to the final four in, in theirs. They were in the, the uh, ch- uh, championship games. And so I went, and the counselor was a good friend of mine, and so I went and asked her, I said, what about the other parts of the st- student body? How did they achieve this year? I, I know the athletes did. I know it's a tremendous athletic experience for the school. Oh, and she said, Mark, here. And she gave me 21 sheets of paper that had achievements of the rest of the student body on 1989. And she said, it's a record year. Everything, grade point average, participation, in all of the other activities, whether it be band, choir, whatever it may be, had increased. And I said, do you think it was fueled by the, the success in the athletics? She said, without question. Do I have a lot of studies to mark that? I don't have a lot of studies to share with you on that. But I would certainly think it to be true in my experiences. I've seen that, that it has a resounding effect on the rest of the people out there. Certainly, um, this is not saying, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to come off that athletics is the whole thing that makes the university work. It, like at Texas A&M, I mean, the, facility and, uh, the facilities that are being built right now, the academic prowess of the students, the, the superiority of the faculty that just keeps getting better and better, all of those things, they have a lot to do with the growth. They have a lot to do with the applications of admission. So I, I don't want to overdo it. I, had a, I heard an interesting quote a long, long time ago, so I don't remember what department it was, but I know Bear Bryant said it. So Bear Bryant said it was really hard to rally the alumni around the chemistry department. And he, he thought it might be better in athletics, and I think there'll probably be some truth to that. Um, the mission for, for our sport, for athletics altogether, pretty simple. I mean, I think it's a great extension to the academic classroom. And that's really where athletics started. It really is. It's where it started. Uh, we're just going to, same thing in drama, same with the, the, the Aggie band out there, the marching band, man. They spend a lot of time. There's some life skills being taught out there that can't be taught in the classroom, and tremendous life skills in coaching and in athletics. I wouldn't have got in it if I didn't think there were some teachable moments almost every day out on the athletic field. So I think there's a lot of mission. And, and, and let me just say this, and it's been said over here already. The athletes are graduating a lot, a lot better than what a normal student is, okay? Well, and I'm not defending the athletes. I'm just saying this isn't a, the way we have the APR now and stuff, and that was referred to. It's doing a pretty good job of getting the, getting the kids uh, to where they're doing it. So uh, you say, does it help that I taught a guy how to turn a double play, that he learned that skill of turning a double play when he's 40 years old and he's applying for a job, or he is trying to turn a real big business venture? Does it help that he learned how to do a double play? And I said, I doubt it. I doubt it. But what I don't doubt is his ability, ability to learn got him there, okay? So he learned how to learn and to compete with it and to take it out on the field, just as he took it when he was 40 years old to try to pull off a, a deal. I, 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 my time's closing here. Let me just say this. Uh, as much as a university and its athletic department uh, combined together can really send off a great, great platform for the athletes and coaches and the football team for good things, it can also send off the negative things, can it? So integrity, ethics, our uh, prowess from our moral fiber, our behavioral traits, all of those things can set us down too, just so they can set us up. But I, I, I come to you and I say I think the mission field with athletics is in place, and I certainly think that it has a, it's more than a, a front porch to the, to the academic world of our universities. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Johnson. Great message. We've got a few questions for you. Okay. Uh, I have a question from Cheryl M., who said, if athletics is the front porch of the university, do you think student athletes should get paid due to the fact that they bring in so much revenue? 
Uh, it's a good question, but I don't think student athletes should get paid for a number of reasons. Number one, it's if we start paying the student athletes, <coughs> some universities are not going to be able to do it. When I was over at Sam Houston State, they could not afford to, uh, to give extra over there. They had a hard time reaching the scholarship limits. So some, some of the schools can do it, some of them can't. And what you always have to do in athletics is have integrity of schedule, integrity of, of eligibility, integrity of competition. So if one guy gets better than something else, then, then you're in trouble. One of the other problems you have, if we start getting the alumni involved in giving money for scholarships and, uh, or, or, or for extra, extra help, then it gets into a problem. So I think what, what we're looking at is to the integrity of competition is the most important thing. And the answer to that question, do they deserve it with all this money that's flying out there? Sure they do. Sure they do. Uh, you know, the kids that really need it, they can have a, a full Pell Grant. The government gives them a scholarship. So they do have excessive money they can get past their full scholarship that they get. So I, I'm, I'm against it. I, I understand why we should, but I worry about the, the integrity of the, of the competition then. I've got a two-part question here from Robert M. Should a student pursue a degree in kinesiology if the university does not have an athletic program or even a gym? Sure. Why not? You know, if he wants to be a coach, I think going through the kinesiology. I was a physical education major. I, ma I minored in biology. I have my master's degree, but I'm glad I went that route uh, because I learned a lot of things about the, the body and all of those things that would help me in coaching. So. If that's available and you want to be a coach, then I, I think it's a good thing. Super. The second part is from Robert M. again is Division One versus Division Three. What's the source of reward for the university in a Division Three versus Division One? Well, again, I think it comes down not so much to monetary value; it comes down to a, a, an identity of pride. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know, we we get a feel. If you haven't got any athletics, if you can't surround and gather in to a certain bonding, and athletics appears to give that. Uh, although it could happen in the drama, it could help in the choir, but athletics seems to be the, the well-rounded one that brings everybody in. Whether it's Division Three, even though it's not a scholarship program and you, have, uh, you don't have as much money to travel and, and put beautiful uniforms on them and all those things, it's still athletics and it's go, it goes down to, to athletics. We go out and root for our team and we get together and have fellowship with other graduates, alumni and students and it's all good. Thank you so much for being here, Coach, and please join me in thanking him.